Okay, thank you, Jen. Um, so first, I'd like to thank the organizers for inviting me to this. This has been a terrifically fun weekend so far. I've had a blast, and I've, I've learned a ton, and, and I'm sure that, that all of you have as well. Um, so as, as Jen suggested, um, my lab is interested in making new types of materials, and the building blocks that we use to make materials are biomolecules. Uh, that the, the core goal is to use the, the structure and function of proteins and nucleic acids and other biomolecules as key components that can add to the repertoire of the types of things that we can build using traditional material science. And so um, just as a way of introducing the lab, um, these are many of our applications that we have and some of the projects that we've been working on over the years. Um, where, first of all, we use proteins as a structural component of materials. We take advantage of the fact that many proteins have periodic self-assembling structures, such as these viral capsids up here on the upper left. Uh, we can take advantage of this by using that to position objects attached to their surfaces so that we can, for instance, make these core shell materials with different external and internal functionalities. Uh, I'll talk about these in some detail today. Uh, we can use proteins to position chromophores in these arrays that we can use as mimics of photosynthetic systems found in cyanobacteria and other organisms. Um, we also are interested in the binding capabilities of many proteins. Um, probably the most commercially relevant of these applications right now is the uh, formation of well-defined immunoconjugates, which are uh, a very rapidly growing of, uh, uh, area of therapeutics that are used in uh, pharmaceutical companies. Um, but we're also interested in the um, function of biomolecules as well in materials. Um, many biomolecules have very selective binding capabilities that we lack in human-made materials. So for example, we have a lot of activity in putting uh, pollutant binding proteins, such as these metallothionines that bind to heavy metals and other types of toxins. We can incorporate these into these polymer gel matrices, where we can then um, pick them up, process them. We can remove them from water once they've removed the contaminants from the samples. We can even make little test strips out of these. And I'll also talk a little bit today about um, using these uh, uh, modifications to improve biomass processing.